नमस्कार अभिनंदन सर्वस्व लोचनम शास्त्रम Which means science is the eye of everyone. One who has got it is like a blind. With this famous joke, in favor of science, on behalf of Ek Bharat Seva, I, Lipika Gulyani, welcome all the dignitaries of to Ek Bharat Seva second virtual international summit on technology outreach as an enabler for inclusive, sustainable, and affordable healthcare. And at this moment, sir. आप सभी को वाल्मीकि जयंती की भी बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं कहा जाता है विज्ञान लोगों को गरीबी और बीमारी से निकाल सकता है और वो बदले में सामाजिक अशांति भी खत्म कर सकता है प्लेटफॉर्म टू एकेडमिशियन एंड साइंटिस्ट टू इम्पार्ट नॉलेज एंड टेक्निकल स्किल टू इंडिविजुअल इंगेज इन डिफरेंट सेक्टर्स ऑफ इनोवेशन टू एड्रेस द कंसर्न issues and challenges of people entrepreneurs startups and organizations the summit aims to facilitate knowledge exchange among stakeholders the focus of tech for seva is on augmenting national capacity with application of health technologies and innovations to improve efficiency of healthcare delivery system this initiative is a joint effort by siboid vigyan bharati and unnat bharat abhiyan Vigyan Bharati or Vidha is a non-profit organization in India that works for the popularization of the sciences in a nationalist manner. The Unnat Bharat Abhiyan is inspired by the vision of transformational change in the rural development, and its objective is to enable higher education institutes to co collaborate with the rural Indians in identifying and developing the issues and the difficulties, as well as developing the appropriate solution for the same. and the sidoid uh, is a platform with a mission to co-create the innovative solutions to the existing bottlenecks in affordable healthcare so i welcome all the esteemed personalities for this wonderful initiative by amnit organization now i request dr virender gar convener of tech for seva to formally welcome all the dignitaries thank you dr lipika on the behalf of team tech for seva i am obliged indebted and i welcome ऑनरेबल श्री बंदारू दत्तात्रेय जी ऑनरेबल गवर्नर ऑफ हरियाणा श्री डॉक्टर शेखर सी मांडे जी डायरेक्टर जनरल सी एस आई आर ऑनरेबल श्री फ्रैंक रिचर जी चेयरमैन हरेशन ग्रुप स्विटरलैंड एंड ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर एन एस कलसी जी चेयरमैन एन सी बी टी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया Sir, we are obliged. We are indebted, and we welcome you all, all heartily, on this platform. As Dr. Lipka has briefly explained, we intend to inculcate the nature of applied research in the faculties, researchers, and the students of the various domains of the science, and we want to bring all the stakeholders. in the field of science on a single platform to make india self reliant in the field of healthcare and to make the healthcare affordable for all and in this uh, mahayagna of this innovation and entrepreneurship we are blessed with all of you on this dais today and we hope and we wish and we pray that with your blessings and your guidance we will be able to achieve a new high and we will be able to give shape to all the expectations and dreams we have planned here in this ebay so once again i welcome you all and i hope that this four day session will be continue uh, in spirit after the session and the real task will begin after the tech for seva event so once again uh welcome so swagatam priya sir thank you very much kaha jata hai har vigyan darshan ke roop mein shuru hota hai aur kala ke roop mein samapt hota hai aur yuvaon ki vigyanik soch desh ko ek nayi disha deti hai with the same approach i welcome the distinguished personality who is known for his research wonders in sciences and is one of the india's leading expert leading expert in dna fingerprinting and diagnostic 
none other than the famous and the well known scientist and the keynote speaker on today's summit dr shekhar c mande ji who is director general of council of scientific and industrial research that is csir and the secretary of the department of scientific and industrial research dsir government of india prior to this he was the director of the center of self science pune he also served as a member of the management council of the tata institute for the fundamental research mumbai he used to be a member of the management councils of the sholapur university and the savitri bhai phule pune university he is a member of the governing body of the indo french center for promotion of advanced research and served as a member of the research council of the institute of genomics and the integrated biology delhi dr mande has served in various advisory committees for the government of india until december 2019 he served as a chair the national committee for the international union of cryptography of the indian national science academy new delhi he used to be the vice president of vigyan bharati a large voluntary science movement in india with subdeshi spirit he was awarded with the most prestigious science award in india in the category of biology sciences that is shanti swarup bhatnagar prize for science and technology he has been honored with the several other prestigious awards including bm birla young scientist award in 1999 in hk florida vigyan bhushan award in 2020 well it's a time to listen to such a wonderful personality with so many feathers in his cap so i request dr shekhar c mande for his keynote address honorable governor of haryana sri bandaru dattatreya ji dr varinder garg ji all the dignitaries present here it's my pleasure to be able to be present among all of you for the tech for seva this year I understand that this year's tech for seva theme is technology outreach as enabler of inclusive and sustainable and affordable health care it is very apt that the post graduate institute of medical education and research chandigarh has organized this the pgimr is not only known to be one of the front line hospitals in the country but also great number of innovations have come out of pgi vigyan bharati is a large social organization it is a science movement that attempts to bring science to the people with a swadeshi spirit and therefore it is only apt that we have today one of the central themes as atmanirbhar bharat that is promoting applied research for employment and entrepreneurship as all of us know the honorable prime minister of india has given a clarion call on the atmanirbhar bharat concept to which all of us are committed all the scientists and technologists are committed into making india as atmanirbhar making healthcare affordable is also another objective of all of us and we do hope that the deliberation that takes place in tech for seva will eventually lead to certain innovations and technologies that can be brought to the people of india in a very affordable manner i am very pleased to be here and wish tech for seva 2021 all the very best and thank you all very much namaskar jai hind for your lecture words and i would just like a feast for the year thank you very much aur ye hamara saubhagya hai ki hamare mukhya atithi adbhut pehal ne apna aashirwad dene ke liye yahan par upasthit hain वे एक सामान्य व्यक्तित्व के मालिक हैं जो कि विज्ञान की पृष्ठभूमि से हैं और उन्होंने राजनीतिक और सामाजिक सेवा में अपने कौशल को साबित किया है वे कोई और नहीं बल्कि हरियाणा के राज्यपाल गवर्नर ऑफ हरियाणा आदरणीय भंडारू दत्तात्रेय जी हैं नॉट इट्स टाइम टू वेलकम सच ए नोटिड पर्सनैलिटी प्रेजेंस हैज ऑलरेडी टेकन दिस वर्कशॉप टू वर्ड सक्सेस इट्स अ प्रिविलेज टू वेलकम द चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ समिट श्री भंडारू दत्तात्रेय जी फॉर इनऑगरल एड्रेस Shri Bandaru Dattatreya ji is presently governor of Haryana. He has worked for slum development, especially to help reduce and supply of affordable water. He is president. Uh, he is president of Samakshara Bharati Culture Organization and is founder of Seva Bharati Slum Development Organization. Also, general secretary of voluntary organization of India and the joint secretary of Andhra Pradesh Cyclone Committee. He has taken up rehabilitation and housing for cyclone victim in Andhra Pradesh and organized social and cultural activities through voluntary organizations. 
He was governor of Himachal Pradesh from 2019 till 21 and held various positions like Union Minister of State Urban Development, Ministry of Railways, Ministry of Urban Development for Poverty Elevation, Chairperson Parliamentary Committee on Welfare and other backward classes that is OBC and many more. So I request the esteemed personality Bandaru Dattatreya ji to kickstart this summit with his words of wisdom. Namaskar. Uh, sir, we uh, just want to have your word command for us to have an inaugural uh, video played post which we request your uh, address to the gathering. Sir, you will have to say the words launch. Thank you. So we'll uh, take a minute here for us to show this exhibition yeah. with various stalls and how yeah. we are conducting this yeah. exhibition. Uh, we uh, request Jagat to run through this uh, exhibition by screen sharing and then after which we request for the... Uh, Hello and good morning. We will give you a quick walkthrough of the conference facilities available. First, we enter our passcode and click on login. While we enter, once we enter the conference facility, we will see this beautiful lobby which tells us about the various facilities or various avenues available to be visited within the, uh, within the conference. So the lobby has a conference information desk and then we move then then we give details on the information desk we are having posters networking lounge and so on and we also and we also have the something called as expo hall so when we click on expo hall this is the expo hall that we'll see so where each of the expo halls have eight eight uh, stalls eight booths of our exhibitors so when we click on this we'll be able to see the stalls. For example, this is our CBOD, and then we have stalls like these. So now after the expo hall, we have a zone where we can do a general chat or the common chat with each other, like how already people have started uh, sharing. And then after the networking zone, we have something called as a uh, testimonial wall where people can share their uh, feedback, etc. Then after that, we have a uh, wonderful, uh, as per the technology of the date, we have got something called as a photo booth where we go and click our photo. So not taking much of a time when we click, let's start it and so on. Then their photos will be displayed in the photo gallery. So finally, when we have all these things, you can see so many of our participants have already clicked their photos and it's already visited, uh, visible. So then we go on to something called as the auditorium where our session is already in progress. So once, once we click there, it will show us these buttons for different and it is divided into day wise, session wise, uh, session wise details, who is the speaker, from what time to what time. And when we click on this, it will take us to the session within the auditorium. Thank you for your time. Now I'll uh, request Sri Bandarada Tatriya Garu to give his uh, valuable address. Good morning, Dr. Dr. Frank, Richard, Chairman, Horasis and Dr. Shekhar C. Mande, DG, CSIR, Dr. Nirmal J. Singh Khalsi, Chairman, NCBET, Dr. Virendra Garg, Convener, Tech 4 Seva. I congratulate 
بلبنان بارتي منت بارتا بيان اين سنتر فار انوفيشن اين بايو ديزاين فار جاينتلي ارغنايزنج ذا فيرتشوال انترناشنال سميت ايك فور سيوا تكنولوجي اوتريش اس انابلر فار انكلوزيو سستينبل افوردبل هيلث كير فروم 20th تو 23rd اكتوبر 2021 ذس سميت ويل برينج توجذر ويريس ستيك هولدرز فار اوغمنتيشن اوف ناشونال كاباسيتي with the application of health technology and innovation the themes of the event are relevant for the swift development of the nation affordable health care is right of every citizen and in last 5 years a great progress is done for provision of health care services to all atmanirbhar bharat is dream of all of us and applied research will translate our knowledge base into employment and enterprises environment friendly and sustainable technologies are need of the hour and to must for the survival of the human race deployment of innovation and technology for health and wellness will help in realizing the dream of health for all i appreciate campaign of h4 hand wash the good hygiene will reduce the burden of communicable diseases and covid infection the organizer of this campaign are doing a marvelous work i wish vignan bharati unnat bharat abhiyan and center for innovation and bio design all the success for virtual summit tech for save i also wish that this summit will contribute immensely in achieving the dream of shrimad bharat sakshat bharat shrest bharat and sakshat bharat thank you moshka
he actively interacts with top businesses, politicians, and intellectual leaders around the world. He advises government and private sector organizations on issues such as globalization, trade, and sustainable development. He has been awarded with prestigious awards like Harish Mahindra Memorial Global Award for outstanding contributions to the global economy from Priya Darshini Academy in 2016. He has authored and edited 37 books and numerous articles on global strategy and Asian business covering topics such as Asian business environment and how Asian firms bounced back from 1998 Asian crisis. Now I request the renowned personality of public speaker and a great entrepreneur, none other than Dr. Frank urban to kindly enlighten us with your words of wisdom. Dr. Frank, uh, I would also like to thank the uh, Honorable Governor of Haryana for his uh, address and uh, especially for positioning Haryana in such a great context. Uh, Haryana is um, one of the lead states of India, focusing very much on technology and also linking technology to healthcare. It's really exemplary what um, Haryana and the Honorable Governor uh, is doing in the state. Let me um, start my presentation, ladies and gentlemen, by saying that um, globalization is here to stay. With COVID-19, we witnessed many countries coming out of the crisis by closing borders, by in a way um, trying to just um, get out of the crisis on their own. Uh, but uh, recently, and India took a very strong lead in that, we are back into multilateral thinking where countries have to work together uh, to come out of this crisis. So I believe, and I deeply believe, ladies and gentlemen, that globalization is here to stay. And globalization will even play a more accentuated role in the future, where the United Nations will be strengthened, and even organizations like the World Trade Organization um, in Geneva. India, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is good news. When you think about uh, what happened a few months ago when the the Delta variant of COVID first hit India uh, and how the country was suffering. It took only um, a few weeks and months to get out of it. And today, India is one of the best prepared countries uh, when it comes to the pandemics. Uh, on the one hand, of course, um, India is the hub for um, drug development um, for, for COVID vaccines. And um, now starting also to, to share uh, this knowledge um, with the world. And that's really, you know, what makes me so hopeful about India's future. India is not just about uh, manufacturing, attracting FDI, but it's all about knowledge. It's about innovation. It's about creativity. Um, and that's maybe also very much linked to the, the use of India, to the young people, all those young engineers uh, who leave the um, uh, engineering schools, uh, the IITs and IIMs of India, uh, working in India, but also all over the world. Um, many of the large multinationals, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in the US and in Europe are led by Indian nationals. So all this together makes me very hopeful. And we see also that the Indian government is starting a very concerted action um, to boost the economy again, to reboot the economy, um, which uh, for me is um, the upcoming, the emerging leading um, engine of global economic growth. Whenever large multinationals from Europe and North America think about growth, they will think about India. They will invest in India. They will put, of course, manufacturing sites, but more and more they will put also um, there are R&D centers, and not only in uh, traditional IT outsourcing industries, but uh, in all industries, um, especially you know when it comes to research in pharmaceuticals, agriculture, um, and um, you know this is like a new movement I see in India, and I would like to invite um, uh, my fellows, my fellow um, uh, entrepreneurs from all over the world, um, to refocus in India, to re-strategize. Um, their visions and uh, to put their assets into India. And I believe, ladies and gentlemen, India is very much welcoming uh, those investments, uh, very much welcoming 
uh, more and more uh, technology transfer uh, coming into India. And we see that India is doing the same actually in the opposite direction. A lot of Indian entrepreneurs are um, investing um, in Europe, are investing uh, in North America. Um, to, today, for example, the, the Tata um, conglomerate is the leading employer in the UK when it comes to, to the manpower uh, of the company. And we see these um, trends all over. Let me just say a few words uh, about my own organization, about Horasis, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Horasis organizes large-scale summits for entrepreneurs and for governments already for the last um, 15 years. We would like to build a bridge for Indian entrepreneurs and the world by hosting the Horasis India meeting um, every year, uh, which brings together around 400 entrepreneurs uh, but also uh, ministers of the government of India. At the last Horasis India meeting three months ago, uh, the Honorable Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal uh, was speaking. Uh, we had also a number of chief ministers and leading CEOs and um, entrepreneurs uh, from India and from the world. And by building these bridges, we believe we can make a positive contribution for better understanding between India and the world. Let me um, just add um, a few thoughts on the future, ladies and gentlemen, because you know we are dealing with this COVID crisis, and um, I believe um, we will soon overcome this COVID crisis. Maybe by spring next year, it will be um, almost done. Um, COVID will be remaining something like um, influenza, you know, which will always be around, but it won't be. A major threat anymore. We will go back to a kind of normal, maybe a new normal, uh, as we have to refocus um, several things. You know, it's a historical chance actually to rebuild our governance system in the world, uh, taking uh, the COVID crisis um, as an impetus for change. So, what do we have to change? Uh, on the one hand, um, it's climate change. Climate change is uh, the main threatening um, issue in the world and uh, we see that uh, sea levels are rising uh, we see that uh, droughts and um, other natural catastrophes are hitting many countries and um, uh, you know climate change is really the, the main issue uh, we have to tackle and technology will help us to do so uh, we just can't put only orders uh, from top you know of saying we have to adjust but we have to take all this um, innovation force coming from the private sector to tackle climate change. Um, secondly, of course, and that's um, the topic of the summit, it's healthcare. Uh, we have to use technology uh, to improve our um, healthcare system all over the world. Um, and uh, technology for me is an enabler. We have to invest into digital healthcare where the, the doctor doesn't have to um, file um, his diagnosis all the time again, but everything will be filed uh, digitally. And, you know, we will carry around our digital wallet with all our data on it. Um, and I think that's the future where also via telemedicine, the doctors can just dial in and put some uh, diagnosis. So that's um, uh, the immediate future I see. And, and thirdly, uh, and I'm, you know, a positive thinker as you heard me speaking uh, by definition, um, I believe that um, the future is bright. Um, I believe that if we can all work together and have this new spirit of togetherness, we can really um, improve the state of the world. So let me um, stop here and I will, I'm open, of course, for questions later on uh, by thanking again uh, Dr. Adad, the, the organizer of this wonderful summit, especially also the Honorable Governor of Haryana and all our guests. And um, uh, again, you know, uh, just to um, finish my, my short reflection by saying India is good news. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish everybody, you know, joining me in this endeavor uh, to uh, really, you know, thrive on this new impetus, this new drive of globalization for India and with India. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot for inviting us with your wonderful and motivational words and also showing trust in India and India. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you.
आज की सबसे बड़ी विज्ञानी खोज खुद विज्ञानी है Now is the time to welcome the intellectual personalities, with special knowledge and expertise in the different areas. None other than our special guest, Dr. Deepak Jit Singh Kalki Ji. Welcome, sir. He was a former IAS officer from 1984 batch and is chairman of National Council for Vocational Education and Training under Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Government of India. In June 2020, Dr. Kalki was appointed as the first chairperson of Punjab Police Complaint Authority. He served for 38 years in public service, including seven years in Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India, one year in NTPC, and two years in Railway. He is he is having various degrees like the BE in uh, BE in, in, in Electric Engineering from IIT Roorkee, MTech uh, in Computer Technology from IIT Delhi, PhD from Thapa University, and Management Programs at Harvard School and Cambridge Judge Business School. He is having special knowledge and expertise in Home Affairs. And justice for 9.5 years, information and communication technology and e-governance sector for 12 years, and education and HRD section for 7.5 years. So I now I request Dr. Kalsi to please deliver his presidential address. Good morning, everyone. Honorable Sri Bandaru Datta Treji, Honorable Governor of Haryana, Dr. Frank Richard, Chairman for Assets, Dr. Shekhar Mande, DG CSIR. and dr brinder kar i am really happy to address this conference on this opening day so i have a long standing relationship with cbaid then then dr brinder kar started the concept of cbaid i was associated right from the beginning and i could see his vision for affordable health in this entire initiative which was started about 3 years back very importantly covid-19 crisis has focused spotlight on universal and affordable health care in india now we all understand the high burden overloads on the existing affordable health care system the shortage in critical care equipment devices like icu and ventilators external over independence on medical supplies and its possible disruption during uh, periods like covid then paradigm shift in healthcare delivery as uh, especially the rise of telemedicine urgent need for building national capacities in healthcare equipment and devices very strong and urgent need for creating innovation systems and environment in healthcare system add its acceptance uh, within the medical fraternity innovation r&d in startups in technical health uh, in uh, health tech medical devices and telehealth and then widespread demand and political support for improved universal health care now these are some of the issues on which really the focus was brought by the covid pandemic can i can i share my screen uh, dr sukhak can you make me the presenter i want to share acha okay fine thank you can you see my screen can you see my screen please now i would like to say few things about the mega trends in healthcare and wellness now as digital health begins to mature there are new business models which are expanding and these models are beyond physical medicines and care delivery which are going to include the uh, behavioral health digital wellness therapies nutrition prescription management and also the overall uh, human body capabilities for the future especially the use of uh, ai for health care uh, application it has a great future growing at more than 68% cagr and also we have to do something about the aging population which is again uh, growing at more than 38% CAG, cagr another important trend which i can see is shift towards the prevention and holistic wellness 
So if we consider the holistic wellness categories, so India is already into it uh, since time immemorial. Our, our culture, our traditions, they all have been promoting holistic wellness. Let it be physical health, emotional health, intellectual health, financial health, spiritual health, social health, occupational health, or even environmental health. Now we have always been there. Also, the focus is shifting from the acute care to prevention. And, and that is the trend at least uh, for the next 10 years. Very, very clear trends we can see. Another important thing which I would like to share is that Asia is, is one of the regions which is going to concentrate more on the health facilities where the expenditure on average expenditure on health is going to more than double during during the period 2018 to 2025 also healthcare uh, data that's that's multiplying every day it was doubling every 24 months in 2018 but today i suppose this this period of two, uh, 24 months has shrunk to about 18 months and similarly uh, use of smartphone it has changed the way we are demanding the health services and we are getting the health services and then uh, digital health is being used by more and more number of people more than 75 percent people are going to use uh, this service by 2025 here i would like to bring a focus on the uh, global digital uh, headlines. Now out of a population of 7.83 billion globally, 5.22 billion people, they have a unique mobile phone. That is 66.5%. And almost 60% are internet users. Whereas 53% have some kind of social media connectivity. India is not far behind. India, if you see 1.39 billion uh, people, out of which 79%, that is 1.1 billion people, they have a mobile phone. And the internet uses 45%. So this is January 2021 data. And in the last nine months, this figure of 45% has gone up. It's closer to 50% now. Also, the uh, active social media users, they are increasing. And the rate of increase is the highest. Presently, it is 32%. Uh, going to be 40% and even 50% by next year. Now, the, when the COVID-19 pandemic crisis came, this was a crisis as well as an opportunity. Now, we could clearly shift a uh, global power shift uh, from Atlantic world to the Pacific world. Also, big opportunity for India to become self-reliant, honorable, Prime Minister has a vision of Aadmir Bharat, make in India, make India the skill capital of the world, and also the global hub. Now, it is, it is in this context that the global innovation technology, manufacturing and services hub, for, for that will be very important for India to also be the global healthcare hub, medical equipment hub, and pharmacy hub and innovation and entrepreneurship in medical devices and telehealth. So these are extremely, extremely important. Now the Aap Nirbhar Bharat of Honorable Prime Minister had five pillars, economy, infrastructure, systems, demography, and demand. Now we are working on all these five pillars. Now we are working in demography. Uh, we are working on systems. Now the demography is a one area where I am working presently. Now, there are certain bold reforms now which are uh, there, which have been implemented to realize the vision of Aapnir Bharat. And these bold reforms are in the area of uh, supply chain reforms, especially for agriculture, rational tax system, simple and clear laws, capable human resources, and strong financial systems. Now, these are extremely important. These are across sectors, and they will drive countries push towards self-reliance. 
also there is a clear focus on land labor liquidity and loss so to cater to uh, labor middle class cottage industry msme and industries among among others now this is where the importance of cbiet comes in cbiet it is a platform which is headquartered at pti uh, chandigarh funded under the aegis of icmr new delhi it's a combination of its a collaboration of pgi with uh, icmr it aims to promote frugal and disruptive innovation through promotion of quality research and indigenous technology and to fabricate robust sustainable and affordable healthcare ideas into viable products now cbiet is is coordinating with the numerous clinical partners and tech experts from several institutes collaborating as uh, brain trust partners top notch uh, national international institutions to fabricate an uh, innovative uh, ecosystem especially in the area of medical devices and is striving hard to bring the visionary dream of aatmanirbhar bharat under the able leadership of honorable uh, cm now the mission and vision uh, has been explained the objective is devising indigenous technologies instruments and devices for affordable healthcare and then designing development uh, development and deployment of affordable indigenous medical devices and innovative diagnostics establish solutions and approaches for various uh, prevalent medical problems and manpower training that's also one of the most important factor if i try to explain you the cbi in single slide so it's basically it's pgi on one side and icmr on other side under the ministry of health affairs and they have connectivity with most of the technical institutions in punjab and around also uh, some of the iims including thapar chandigarh university chitkara university and other similar institutions number of iims are also connected for the purpose of entrepreneurship and there are potential areas of collaboration with cbiet uh, including the resources and knowledge pool experts of mentors e learning resources sharing best practices uh, teachers training sessions student sessions inter school competitions and they take large number of uh, uh, people youngsters in terms whom they also uh, deploy in research train and deploy in research so cbiet also acts as a virtual incubator space uh, or a virtual university space for the purpose of taking these innovations to the market so this is a this is a very very important uh, area on which cbiet is concentrating now the the areas on which the cbiet is working uh, they are listed here right from telemedicine to remote monitoring critical care virtual assistant chatbots organ printing you now we have a 3d printer but they have yet to start this ai iot digital therapy therapeutics genomics data sciences blockchain now all these areas you know they are working on one or the other projects and number of projects you know they are on the anvil some of these uh, they have already reached the stage where they can be commercialized now they are looking for investors and and uh, i hope very soon uh, they would be on that path of further growth similarly there are a uh, few other initiatives in the pipeline Uh, development programs for promotion of uh, interdisciplinary innovation and search uh, helping budding budding entrepreneurs and idea crowd so uh, crowding series or especially for the healthcare uh, promoting tele telemedicines uh, in uh, tier 2 and tier 3 uh, cities towns and urban semi urban areas then capacity building program then uh, socialized training uh, training of doctors and uh, a specialized training of doctors and uh, paramedics cutting edge technologies and online programs some of these programs so the area where they, normally they are working healthcare access and delivery affordable healthcare and quality healthcare so that, these are the three basic uh, themes around which they work and they combine technologies with this so pharma on the one side says 
this is one of the examples a development process for combination product and software pharma on one side software on the other side and devices on the third side now once you combine all three so you get into health tech so that is uh, one area where c bite is concentrating <clears throat> now if you look at the uh, mega trends 2030 frost and sullivan report even here you now one of the uh, important trend is future of healthcare that is the last uh, point which they have listed similarly you now if you look at convergence of mega trends again here health and wellness is, is a very very important point you now uh, which is shaping the world and by 2030 you will see a lot of changes in the area of health and wellness where we need to concentrate i was looking at the static technology trends combinatorial innovations trends are uh, in fashion now they are they are in vogue so there are a people centricity concept of people centricity people of location independence uh, and the concept of resilient delivery so these are the nine nine areas which are extremely important and these nine areas they guide some of our future innovations in this area so key tech trends last 60 years computing power has improved by 1 trillion times and all businesses will need to adapt transition from social mobile analytic and cloud to blockchain ai vr ar and quantum computing so we call it a change from migration from smack to dark data science you now is going to be very important using variable data uh, variable data to monitor and prevent health problems, improving di diagnostic accuracy and efficiency, turning patient's care into precision medicine, uh, advancing pharmaceutical sir, search. Sir, sir wo, uh, last slide is not visible. The slide you are speaking is not visible. So, you slide pe dubara stop sharing and then share it again. Yeah. So, I was, I was talking about the data science, variable data to monitor and prevent healthcare problems, improving diagnostic accuracy and efficiency, patient's care into precision medicine, advancing pharmaceutical research to find care, optimizing clinical performance through actionable insights, then uh, taking the risks out of uh, prescription medicine, reducing healthcare costs, and very importantly, importantly, data privacy regulations have to be uh, put in place. Then, Personal profiling of patients by analyzing their life profiles, their social, personal, health, financial, job profile, etc. So that is also going to change the way the healthcare is provided. And similarly, we require reskilling of large number of uh, people on AR, VR, IOE, artificial intelligence, blockchain. You know, all all the staff which is engaged in in, in healthcare work. No, AI is uh, proving to be very, very important area. I.B. Watson, you may, you may have heard of, Oracle Alter Ego, Sophia. No, these are all uh, very sophisticated AI programs which are being used more and more. Uh, IBM Watson, for example, can read about uh, 40 lakh documents in 15 seconds. Similarly, 3D printing will open door to bionic uh, bionic body parts then automation in healthcare business will ride on three waves that is algorithms augmentation and autonomy so 5g is going to be very important this means the telemedicine combined with real-time ar or vr health diagnosis that would become a reality chatbots will take over most of the mundane functions of the uh, secondary healthcare workers and data privacy and regulations uh, we have already discussed. Now, tech for Seva, now theme for the conference, as I see it, now everyone has spoken about the four focal themes, but the main theme and focus is augmenting national capacity in application of healthcare technologies and support innovation to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of healthcare delivery system. So that is, to my mind, is the main takeaway out of this conference. And 
the technology driven sustainable development platform which it is it's a it's a it provides an opportunity for all the key stakeholders and the stakeholders here they are number one the technology providers number two the community participation number three the corporate especially csr with csr funding and number four all the stakeholders and the targets targets could be institutions target could be programs target could be anything now when when this entire ecosystem tech for seva works in collaboration with different domains it create wonders and that is what we are we are trying to do so uh, basically community participation entrepreneur organization csr corporate and technology providers now when they come together then they create the innovation which can be taken to the market now as far as healthcare world is concerned now a connected ecosystem of sensors and devices on and around the individual it serves the functions of uh, capture and measure identify uh, stratify the risk inform make decisions take actions right from starting with on body to in home to community to in clinic to in hospital so that is the entire chain which is uh, going to be covered some time frames of the commercialization and maturization of uh, top uh, technologies by 2025 so some of the technologies which are going to be reality very soon you can see on on the screen and these are the areas where you know see by it is working and trying to find partners trying to find research partners trying to find people who can get into entrepreneurship who can take these uh, innovations to the market for providing the affordable health care uh, again your screen hai that is frozen aap kindly full screen mode pe aa jaiye yes 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 sir now, can you see this now yes sir yes. yeah 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 so i was saying these are the areas where uh, cbiad can collaborate with others uh, cbiad has a number of innovations the even they slide. are they the are different slide. the next slide uh, yeah this is what next next yes sir yeah yeah can you see it now yes sir yeah. this these are the digital health uh, uh, innovations you know they they are the startup uh, big startups of 2020 i was just trying to look at it the kind of uh, landscape which is uh, it has created so you know, that's that's uh, the indicative area where uh, we can see administrative automation and digitization to clinical intelligence and enablement to pharma supply chain health plans and benefit management real world evidence virtual care delivery then online offline yeah, care yeah. primary and urgent care specialty care clinical trials drug discovery uh, screening and diagnostics and disease management and therapeutics so these are the areas where uh, the most of the research funds uh, and most of the uh, startup funds uh, went now this the, this is a slide from uh, cb inside so so i uh, i'm i'm very happy that this uh, tech for seva initiative has taken such, such a good shape and over a period of next 4 days you now all these people are going to come together and trying to find solutions to the important problems affordable health care agriculture environment and other important areas so i wish you all the best for for the conference and i hope that something good will will come out of it thank you thank you so much thank you lot sir thank you very much for your warm words and guiding and showing us the way to lead with the mega trends in healthcare and wellness for next 10 years thank you very much sir and it's absolutely correct that most significant significant invention of the science is science itself so with the same approach tech for seva second virtual international summit took this initiative to invent more and that to reach at the grassroots level in affordable prices 
Now it's the time to move towards the last phase of this inaugural session. Although it's tough to say goodbye to the famous and the world in our dignitaries, but we have to proceed. So for that, I request Dr. Sakshi to give a formal word of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Lipika. On behalf of Vigyan Bharti, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, and Center for Innovation and Biodesign, I express my gratitude to Shri Bandaru Datta Treji, Honorable Governor of Haryana, for his kind presence and inspiring inaugural address. We all present here have taken note of the vision expressed and would deliberate and work in this direction. I take this opportunity to express our sincere thanks to Frank Fritcher as chief guest. Your presence today in this event has immensely enhanced its importance. Thank you very much, Frank. It's been our fortune to find distinguished presence of Dr. Shekhar Mandeji. We are grateful for your value presence here, sir. We are thankful for your excellent speech. Thank you very much. Dr. N.S. Kaltiji, we thank you for presiding over this function and for your comprehensive demonstration of various initiatives by Government of India, visions, and other initiatives and work being done at Center for Innovation and Biodesign, PGI Chandigarh. We are indebted for your never tiring guidance and support, sir. Thank you very much. I would like to express deep appreciation for the overwhelming response received from the participants in form of submission of their ideas and participation. Our heartful gratitude to Shri Jain Sahasrabude ji, Dr. Rajni Sharoda ji, Dr. Vivek ji, Dr. Varinder Gad ji, under whose able guidance this event is being organized. Thank you very much. Lastly, team members from C. Bayodi, Vibha, and Unnat Bharat Abhyan and Samvad deserve to be complimented for the systematic execution of the event. Again, gratitude to all for joining here and with the end this session here. You are requested all to join us for the next session at 12.15. Thank you very much. Thank you.